I've often been asked where people can purchase a Shena board or a Tach de Yesheno. Um, and so instead of telling you where to buy one, I'm going to show you how to make one uh, out of basically scrap wood and using extremely rudimentary tools, just a saw, a hammer, a drill for pilot holes, some nails and some sandpaper to sand it down. So this piece of wood is actually perfect for a, a, shen, a tach de yesheno. Uh, it's already curved off and it's about the right dimensions. It just needs to be cut to shape. So this one's really easy to work with. Um, this one's the perfect length and I can make two boards out of it by cutting it and sanding it. And this one's a little bit thinner, um, but will absolutely do. So this is the perfect size for the board on top. It's just under an inch in depth, they all are. So they're about an inch in depth. Uh, and this one here is two and a half inches wide approximately. Uh, this one's about two inches wide. So it's a little narrow, but will definitely work for the job today. Um, this piece here, it's 29 inches in length. And what we were looking for is between 28 and 30 inches. 30 is definitely long um, in length, but we're going to go with the 29 inch. So this one's the perfect length just needs to be cut in half. And these are scraps of wood. These are just odd scraps I have lying around. And then I need to make some feet. Uh, so for the feet, uh, they, they need to be at least an inch and a half uh, wide at the bottom to hold the board. Uh, and they're going to be two inches deep. Uh, and the bottom of the board, the bottom of the foot, is going to be a trapezoid. Uh, and that's going to be about five and a half inches at the bottom. And then the length, the width of the board so two and a half or two at the top so that it fits nicely so we have two feet on each board and these are again just scraps you could use two by four because it could be two inches wide it doesn't really matter this one these ones are actually um really old you can see but i'll sand them off and they'll be fine uh, these are one and a half by five and a half i think and then the same here one and a half by like three and a half inches so these are super easy pieces of wood lying around you can make it very easily with almost no carpentry skills i'm going to use the this cross saw and normal hammer claw hammer you can use a tack hammer it doesn't really matter a drill um then I'm, for that i'm just going to drill pilot holes because it made my life easy and the nails i'm going to use i'm probably going to use these uh two and a half inch uh, brights with a, their finishing nail so they've got a small head as you can see uh, so they're not we're going to put them so they actually punch through we can actually use a uh, nail punch to kind of push them a bit deeper um, in fact that's what I'll do and if you haven't got a nail punch uh, you can just easily use a bigger nail and just punch them in like a you know big old nail as a nail punch. So that's what we're going to do today. It'll be nice and simple, pretty quick job, basically the easiest piece of equipment you can make and you can make it um, from just scraps of wood you've got lying around or that you can basically rustle up somewhere from somebody who's got pieces of wood lying around. So measuring off uh, with this piece, it's already wide enough, like I said. It's about two and a half inches wide, which is perfect. And then I want a piece that's 29 inches long. So I'm going to take two inches off the top and then uh, cut at 31 to make a 90, a 29 inch long piece. And here with this one, it's actually um, use my other rule it's a bit deep I only need two inches so I've measured two inches and marked a line along the whole piece and then I need a five and a half inch base with a two and a half inch uh, top part so that when this board is sitting on top of it it will sit flush with the board so I just five and a half um, and the way to Obviously do that is that if that was five and a half, we need one and a half inches on each end to make it come to the trapezoid. Um, so there's the trapezoid foot. I'm going to cut the first one 
and then um, we're going to uh, use that first one as the template for the others and that will make my life easier than just measuring it measuring out all the way along which cuts we're gonna make so we'll cut the first one and then um, use that as the template um, but I just marked it off marked off these here the cuts here so let's make the cuts so I've clamped it down to saw it maybe you don't have a clamp you can just lean it over something and cut it's pretty simple woodwork Since I've got it clamped down, now it's cut, I may as well uh, try and sand it off. I'm going to use some coarse sandpaper. I've just put this on a hand sander, but you can just use the paper. And I'm just going to sand it off with the coarse paper to try and make the edges a bit rounded off. Uh, and then round off the edges, mostly just for aesthetics. You don't need to do that. You can just literally cut it and leave it, just sand off the sharpness. Uh, of the edges and that'll be good. And then once I've done that, I'll start hitting it with some finer grade uh, papers and still coarse and then I've got some finer grade as well. But you can see already with that coarse sandpaper it really starts to curl and make that nice rounded edge which is kind of pretty so on my second end of the board now and since it's been shaped with the rough sand it's been cut and shaped with the rough sand i'm now gonna fine sand the entire piece of wood so it's just a nice smooth piece of wood with a good finish so uh, with that i'm just using a fine this is a 400 uh, it's an extra fine finish one, so be nice and smooth. I've just got another sanding block. I'm just going to sand all the whole thing up. You can see it's already starting to come out nicely in the uh, grain of the wood's going to really start showing through too, which is something that's quite pleasant. It's nice to have good aesthetics, but like I said, this is just a scrap of wood, so any wood will do. If you just want something functional, it really doesn't matter. So now you can see, top board is finished. It's not perfect in terms of sanding, but the important part is that it's smooth, so it's really smooth to the touch. Um, you just don't want any sharp edges where you're going to cut yourself because you're going to be putting a lot of your body weight on top of the board. So there you go. Scrap piece of wood for the top of the boards looking pretty decent. So now we're going to cut the first foot. Nice and easy. I'll cut off this top piece after I've just cut the shape of the trapezoid. First cut made. Of course, you could use power tools, It'd make life easier rather than a mitering saw like this. But that being said, I like to put sweat equity into making it into making the tool it's sort of something about using hand tools um, makes the process really enjoyable so there you have the first foot cut out in rough but you can see it will sit on the board about here um, and support the board for our push-ups um, so we're just going to make more of these, going to make uh, a few more because I'm actually making several boards. So now I've got my two inch line. I just mark it 
mark that up to there. Um, nice and easy. And I can just do one there, then replace it, put one there and just draw, mark off all the feet I want to make. Okay, so having cut the feet, they fit quite nicely. Uh, what I am going to do is make sure there's not really too much of a gap underneath. Uh, it's a little gap here, just here. So I'm going to sand down until that's as flush as possible so it's the most stable it can be um, so i'm going to do that and then we will drill some pilot holes and put the nails in <laughs> It's also just worth sanding down uh, the sharp edges on these feet before you attach them to the board. Uh, it'll make your life easier than trying to uh, sand down the full board. So you already sanded down the top part. Now we're just sanding down the feet and make it nice and smooth. Bottom's not too important. And the joint where it hits the wood, it doesn't need to be super smooth either. Um, it just needs to be flat so it will stick, uh, so it will sit nicely on the, the wood, on the board. So now I've got the board roughly assembled, uh, I'm going to uh, drill the pilot holes here and here and here. Uh, and then I am going to put the nails in. So the distance here is about six inches so we've made a total board of 29 inches six inches either side as uh, the top of the board is two and a half inches deep sorry two inches wide by about just under half an inch in depth and the feet are one and a half wide it could be too wide it doesn't really matter it could even be a slightly more narrow but the important part is to make sure that it's uh, nice and wide this way across the base like the length of this the base should be at least five inches this one's five and a half so it's two and a half at the top five and a half at the bottom so now there's nothing left for me to do except for drill the pilot holes Decided to go with the one and a half inch. Uh, the other ones are a bit big and I'm a bit concerned they might split the wood uh, and these will work just fine. So there you have it, in a pretty short amount of time, you can make yourself a pretty decent 
Tachtei Sheno or a Shena board as it's sometimes called, it's often called in the West. It isn't necessarily the most beautiful. Uh, you know, I'm kind of not the best woodworker, so I've kind of have to sand it down a bit more maybe, but it's pretty smooth and it's definitely completely functional right now. Um, actually, if you go to Iran and to the Zirkane there, uh, they do not have all lots of beautiful boards. Volume is the key, so they need to have a lot of them. So actually, a lot of them look a lot like this one. Pretty rudimentary. Uh, you could stain it or paint it or put something on it. I'm probably going to just leave this one completely bare wood. Um, you can... Uh, use uh, beeswax is pretty nice if you want to keep it um, kind of looking a bit nicer but I'm just going to keep this as bare wood uh, I'm not entirely sure some kind of pine probably I think is the top and this is definitely pine for the feet uh, so there you have it Tachte Yesheno